All right, so welcome back to the build series. Um, I was told by a couple people to start on the passenger side, so I stopped working on the driver side and stopped cutting a bunch of the stuff out that I was cutting out because I may not even need to cut all that stuff out. So we're gonna uh, get stop working over there and we're gonna start working on the passenger side here. So I'm thinking that doesn't look bad. Um, I've actually thought about cutting those spring perches off and making a flat spot right there for the bump cans. So, what are you doing there, buddy? There's nowhere for you to go. Oliver, Mr. Fuzzy Butt. He likes coming out in the garage with me. I mean, that doesn't look bad. And really, I could probably go ahead and cut like the bottom portion of that off. And that would give me the ability to uh, raise the axle all the way up. I really want to go higher. Um, but my fuse box is right here. My battery box is like right here. So I wonder if I take this and raise this up an inch, what that will do for me. So let's have a look see. <sighs> well. We got the, I'm pretty sure we got enough clearance here for the tower and I've got it pretty sure the height that I need to give me four inches of shaft showing, that would give me four inch up travel. Um, it's actually probably about four and a half inches of shaft showing. So <clears throat> that would give me four inches of up travel and then uh, theoretically eight inches of down travel. Um, this is what it looks like inside the engine bay. So the battery box is going to go here. I will have to mount a new bracket here for the fuse box. Um, the air box should still fit in right here like it's supposed to, like just like factory. I think the next step is Go ahead and just put a straight line on this and cut this tower down. So we're gonna try this um, new ventilation contraption I got here. This will be the first time I've used it with the plasma. Um, hopefully it works all right. It should, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. Turn the plasma up to 50 amps, quarter inch steel, blast through it. I could totally stand to have a little bit bigger garage. Let's try putting this back up there again and um, bringing the axle all the way up. So my track bar bracket on axle side all the way up into the frame and I actually don't think I can go even this high because of my drag wing. Unless I want to notch this frame here. That is about, is about as high as I can go. Twenty-one inches, fully collapsed. All right, so at roughly ride height, I'm sitting at about four and a half inches of bump, or four and a half inches of shaft showing. It gives me seven and a half. Is that right? Seven and a half inches of uh, down travel, four and a half inches of up travel. Actually, that right there is about all the up travel I have. 
from the position of where we're at. And that is an inch and three quarter. So the whole tower can come down a little bit. That way I'm utilizing the whole shock. So we're gonna get some cardboard cut out in the shape of the towers because then I got to start working on the angles um, and then the height. Yeah, so let's get started on that. All right, so we know the tower is 17. What I have set up right now, the tower is 17 and a half inches long. And then they are three and a half inches wide. Oh, looky here, he's at it again. Now he's got an easy way up there because I have the hood open. Dude, just get down. Please. All right, so I gotta get him down before I can carry on. You gonna try tight walking it? Come on. I guess I'm gonna put the hood down. All right, let's get back to work. I think I have it. I don't know about you, but that looks pretty uniformed. That almost looks like a shock tower. Let's go see what it looks like on the Jeep, though. My 90 degree that I thought I needed is not really a 90 degree. Today is the first day that I've truly been frustrated with this Jeep in this whole uh, build series. Um, <clears throat> I put the passenger tire on to check clearance of the new tower that I've kind of mocked up. I wanted to make sure that the tire wasn't going to get into it. And it doesn't look like it will. Um, when I go to full stuff, it still clears, but then my pitman arm down there is contacting the track bar. So I've been throwing up the idea, contemplating the idea of actually going full hydro on this thing. And that would get rid of the drag link. Um, that would get rid of the pitman arm. So that would allow more stuff on the passenger side because the drag link's not in the way. And there's no more pitman arm to hit the track bar. So now I'm at kind of a crossroad. I'm kind of at a dilemma. Um, do I pull the trigger and go ahead and buy the hydro hydraulic stuff and just kill the first of the year deadline that I've got and then just shoot for April when we got a group that's going down to uh, AOP? But that's probably going to be it for this video. I spent most of the day or I spent a couple hours of today just running and getting some gas. First place I went to was completely out. Second place I went to was another half hour away from there, and then it was a half hour home. So, um, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I don't know if I'm going to be there for the run because I'm thinking I'm just going to go ahead and pull the trigger and buy all the stuff and do full hydro while I'm here. But who knows? I don't know. I'm too. I'm too indecisive here. So you'll have to check back for the next video to see what I'm doing in that one.